First question is from Frank D. Murano. How does exercise tempo affect the aesthetics of resistance training? Tempo. We, we have to decode yeah, this first. I feel like this was a debate that we had trying to interpret this question. So the way I interpret it is he's saying, okay, how does the the tempo of your lifting change how the exercise affects your body? In other words, how does it build muscle if you go slower versus faster mm. or pause or whatever? What's the difference between the two, the different tempos? Justin thinks the aesthetics of the movement. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. That's the way I read it, anyways. Like he just of used. You do. Yeah, aesthetic <laughs> as being like um, the way that the uh, the actual like performance looks and the technique oh, and all that kind of stuff. Interesting. Okay, so I'll start with mine, and okay. then you can answer that. So, as far as the aesthetics of the body is concerned, now if you look at studies, studies will compare different. Uh, tempos and, and determine which one builds the most muscle. It's very similar to what you see with these rep range uh, studies. And in these short studies, which are typically anywhere between 12 weeks, usually six weeks, 12 weeks, or maybe 16 weeks, they'll determine that a particular tempo builds more muscle than other tempos. And usually that tempo is a relatively controlled negative with a controlled yet explosive uh, positive. Uh, so essentially good form tempo uh, would be the one that would build uh, the most muscle in these studies. But here's the problem with this, is that these studies only last 12 to 16 weeks, and your body adapts to tempo just like it does to rep ranges. So if you always train in this kind of controlled uh, tempo, then some explosive repetitions or some slower repetitions will probably get your body to start changing again. Now, from a performance standpoint, tempo, I think, is a little bit more important in terms of what you want to stick to. If you're an athlete... Um, depending on the sport, you probably want to be more explosive mm -hmm. with your repetitions. But if we're talking about just developing the body, I think it's important to work with different types of tempo and break it up. You know, I, I like to do every month or so, I'll slow the reps down or I'll focus on a portion of a rep where I'll pause at the bottom or pause at the top of rep. Um, and then maybe the next four weeks, I'm going to go heavier and be a little bit more explosive with my movements, or even go lighter and be more explosive to where the bar moves, you know, faster. All tempos, most tempos, I should say, build muscle. Mm -hmm. There's all there's a little risk with the faster tempos, so I tend to tell people to stay away from those unless they're really really good with their technique and form. But other than that, they all build muscle. The one that you're used to is the one that's going to work least for you. So uh, you know, work within all of them. Yeah, I think that's a more interesting <laughs> interpretation of this this question. I think the other one, you know, I was thinking of it's it's the the way that I read it being tempo being important, going slow, for instance, learning techniques. I think that uh, it, it provides more opportunity to. Um, you know, sort of navigate uh, and figure out how your body sways one way or the other based off of like the imbalances that you need to determine. Uh, so tempo being uh, a factor in the very beginning, I'm always like very much geared in the very slow tempo, uh, being able to be controlled, being able to stabilize. And then we start sort of messing with that tempo and building up the speed of it. Uh, once I feel like the, the technique, uh, is, is polished and it's mastered. And then we can start really applying, uh, some, some more, uh, speed to those reps to get those types of benefits that you mentioned in terms of stimulating the muscle in a different way. Well, so I, I took this similar to, I think, Sal, um, as far as like what this person was asking, although I think Justin makes good points for what he's talking about. Um, it's, it's so it's just like exercise, changing up exercise, uh, rest periods. These This is the same the same conversation that we have with that. And it's to Sal's point of the sticking to a range, sticking to a tempo for four to six weeks. If you've been doing that tempo for X amount of time, the best thing you can do to build muscle or have an aesthetic physique is to change that up, is to do a different tempo. Now, that all being said, almost always when I got a client, and this kind of goes to Justin's point, I would always slow down the tempo. It's very rare, and I've said this on this show before, the next time you go in a gym, and look around at everybody bench pressing, squat, doing all the movements, and just see if you see a four-two-two tempo. You just don't see you it. Never see it. You never see it. You never see somebody take four full seconds uh, on the descend or on the negative, a two-second pause at the bottom, and then two seconds on on the pot. You just count it, count it, and show me somebody. And that is technically to the studies that 
Sal is alluding to, that's technically the best tempo for building muscle. So if that's the best t tempo for building muscle and hardly anybody does it, uh, I, I think it's one of the first places I go to teach. So I love to, to slow everybody down to a 4-2-2 tempo to start them off. And I, my, most clients get great results from it just because they've never slowed their tempo down that. And then it plays into Justin's point that he's making. It also is easier for you to make the adjustments to their, their mechanics and to address things that are going on in their body. So it's even better for, for getting good form and technique. So that's my go-to tempo to start. And if, it, if anything, I'll, I'll, I'll lean even slower. So I might even pause longer at the bottom. I might even take the descend or the negative longer than four seconds. It might be five seconds. You just don't ever see that anymore. You don't see anybody really train or any ever, right? You never see anybody training this way. And there's so much value, uh, both to both points these guys are making. The point of Justin's of really working and honing in on the technique and form. To Sal's point, most people don't train in that tempo. So just by training in that tempo, you're going to see change in the body.